Hey guys, it's your friendly podcaster here, Brian Dales. Uh, We're brought to you today by Lulu.com. As always, uh, I wrote a book, 2006, 2007. You've heard about it. It's all fun and games until. Head on over to Lulu.com slash Spotlight slash Dales Inc. And you can find that book in an e-format or hardback copy. And you can also find my younger son's book, Brian Dales Jr., Tree Town. He wrote a children's book back then. We helped him publish it, Uh, we being uh, me and uh, my ex-wife. So head on over there. You can find a whole bunch of good stuff at lulu.com, but find those two books specifically. Check them out. Uh, Maybe download a copy. Maybe buy a copy, a hard copy, so you can thumb through it at the beach or wherever you're at. It's a great book. I think you'll enjoy it. And it's got some great stories. We're talking about my book now. It's got some great stories um, of what I was doing back in my life to maybe hurt my ex-wife. And it's just a great book for couples to try and figure out what you're doing, what you're not doing to make your marriage successful. So check it out, lulu.com. That's lulu.com. Also, we're brought to you, as always, by the Keto Dojo. Keto Dojo is on Facebook. It's a Facebook page I started with uh, my good friend over at Craft Conundrum, Karen Easterby. And we just talk about great stuff. We have great discussions. We have great videos out there. We have great recipes. Everybody gets involved. There's 397 members right now. I can't believe it. It's grown so much. We're almost about to reach 400 members. Help us be successful. Help yourself be successful. Get back into that uh, bikini, into that bathing suit before the summer is over get out to the beach have a good time get your health back in order and get your life back in order that's what the keto dojo is out there to help you do so find it on facebook the keto dojo welcome to craft conversations where i craft a conversation with influential interesting and fun guests from around town and we also talk a little bit about craft beer i am your host brian dales and today's episode, I will be talking to myself once again, and enjoy this episode. So, you know, I mean, there's business ventures, and sometimes things go absolutely pitch perfect, sometimes things don't. <sighs> Caleb and I had a business venture, and we started out with a goal in mind, and I think we hit that goal for the most part, but we kind of overshot that goal in some ways. And it's kind of gone, you know, it's getting ready to go a different direction. We had some goals, we did some things, we kind of got out of control, we got we got big heads, we kind of thought we were celebrities, what have you. And um, I don't know, we just went hog wild, man, we went crazy with it. We did this big event, and it was very successful, I think, for the most part. Um, could have been better? Absolutely, it could have been better. I hope those that of you that went to the... Sorry, I was tearing up some paper that was sitting on the desk. But I hope that the people that came to the event had a good time. I know they did. I saw it. I saw the, the laughter on people's faces. I saw the smiles. I saw the kids having a great time. I saw the people enjoying their kids i saw dogs out there the musicians were having a great time they were in the zone the music was fantastic i think everything went off without a hitch to be honest with you it was a fantastic time let me tell you the heat was a bear and we got lucky with the weather because the when we first got there we started setting up this event and for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about that are just kind of tuning in, this is called uh, Rivercraft 2018. We put it on out at uh, Blackwater at the Ashley, which is out in Ridgeville, South Carolina. And we uh, solicited the help of Fleming Moore from Bummerville Amphitheater. We also had Mark DeShane from the Blackwater on the Ashley, which is where the event was. Uh, they graciously hosted us uh, for a small fee. And I think the event went well. We, we went out there on July 1st, the 1st of July. We were trying to make it a kind of a pre-Independence Day type party, uh, music festival. We got out there early in the morning, 9.30 or so. We started setting up. We had our vendors out there. They were having a good time. Uh, Grays of Somerville 
we had Famulares or Fam's Brewing Company is what they want to be called. I think, I can't even remember. We, we had this discussion at the actual event, <laughs> whether or not they were Famulares Brewing Company or Brew Pub or were they Fam's Brewing Station. We didn't know what they were. Fam's Brewing Company, I think, is what they want to be called. Uh, We had those guys out there, Frothy Beer Brewing Company brought a few beers. We had Holy City represented. Um, Oak Road Brewing Company was supposed to be out there, but we ran into some glitches with licensing and rules and all this uh, bullshit. So Oak Road will hopefully be at the next event that I host. Um, But we had a great time. The weather held off. We actually had some rain early on while we were setting up. The event didn't kick off until noon. And... We got some rain, I guess, about 11 o'clock, just a drizzle. I mean, it kind of uh, really kind of cooled things down for a second. And then, of course, being in the south, the heat kicked in and all that moisture just kind of emanated or emanated. Is that the word? Um, Evaporated off of the concrete and just made it kind of a humid mess. But that dissipated pretty quickly. As long as the cloud cover kind of came over occasionally, the temperature was, I think, Endurable. God, is that even a word? I don't even know what the words are anymore. But we had a great time. Uh, We had uh, six different bands scheduled. We had one person that had to skip out because of family emergency, Clayton Lewis, which that's, you know, things happen. Shit happens. And we expected some glitches. But that was really the only glitch that we had in the entire festival was uh, one of our uh, bandmates uh, having to tap out. We had Fleming Moore and friends kind of fill in that gap, so it all worked out perfectly. Uh, we had King of Pops out there serving popsicles, which was fantastic on a on a hot day. I think people really enjoyed that. We had uh, Stephanie out there; she was doing some art and she was doing a lot of uh, activities with the kids. She occupied those guys. Uh, we had uh, Reflections African Jewelry out there. We had CQ Works. It was just a fantastic time. Um, we. I think we ended up going till about 7 p.m. that night. So from about 12 to 7, uh, we hopefully hope to do another uh, festival here in the fall out of Blackwater. I know Fleming and I are uh, in talks with doing quite a few more things. And, and Blackwater, as a matter of fact, they do a lot of oyster roasts throughout the year. And we've already talked about doing some events with those and having some, uh, some donated beer out there from local breweries around town. So stay tuned for more festivals. Um, As I mentioned in the previous podcast, Caleb and I are no longer doing this venture together. Caleb has moved on to do uh, some other things, which are great things. He's, uh, you know, CQ Works. You can find him at calebquire.com. He does a lot of pet portraits. He's doing a lot of wildlife uh, watercolors right now. They're just for Domino's. He's getting involved with uh, a couple of real estate companies, and he's doing some Really cool stuff with uh, real estate, uh, I don't know what you call it, drawings, I guess. I mean, I wish he was here to kind of describe it, describe it better than I'm describing it. But he's doing some uh, drawings of real estate. So if you purchase a house, let's say you go out there and you purchase a house here in town somewhere, he will draw that house for you, packages up all nicely into a nice little package, a gift box, uh, it's signed, it's got uh, realtor information on it, it's got sale date, all this kind of stuff uh, to, to create a great memory for you. And uh, he provides that as a gift uh, through the realtor to give to you as a, as a housewarming gift of sorts. So um, check that out. If you're going to buy a house here in town, hopefully it's through one of those two realtors and you're going to get you a nice piece of art that will commemorate your sale or your purchase And you can hang it on the wall. People can see it forever, and it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, What else are we going to talk about today? Um, Well, like I said, people separating. You know, there's a lot of great business ventures out there that uh, are successful. There's a lot of them out there that fail. There's a lot of partnerships to get together, and people have um, kind of conflicting attitudes, conflicting uh, directions that they want to go, it's just creative differences. Um, Caleb and I have some creative differences, and who knows? There may be a time, sometime in the future, if if the stars align and the universe really 
wants to see things happen. Caleb and I could get back together. We could do some great things. We could do some reunion tours. I don't know. The future is so much in the air right now. But what I do know is that I am taking it a direction by myself. Like I said in the past episode that I released on Tuesday, we may be doing some stuff here in the Craft Conversation Studios here at the Dales Zen Garden and Pub. We may be, may be doing some remote tours. I might take it out to the breweries. I might take it out to the businesses, and we'll do some stuff there in their own space. That way they feel comfortable. They get to represent their business. You get to hear their vibe from their location. We might be taking it to Homegrown Brew House, where I'm going to be uh, partnering, up, partnering up with those guys here in the near future. Um, hopefully we're going to have maybe a studio space there in the back and we'll do some stuff there. We're going to start doing some video again eventually. Right now, uh, the video is kind of down, but that's all coming back. So bear with me and we're going to put together a great show for you. What I do have, excuse me, I'm trying to burp and it's just not coming out. But what I do have is I talked to Gordon Peters today. Uh, Like I said, I've got Ooh, there it went, finally released. But I've got uh, probably 18 to 20 people that are interested in com- still coming on the podcast. We're tr- kind of doing part two. We've done 22 episodes up to the one that I released uh, of myself on Tuesday, which was the 23rd episode. We've got another uh, handful of people that we're going to get on the podcast. We're going to do new shows. We've got musicians, we got business owners, we got uh, bartenders, we got bar owners, we got brewers, all kind of interesting people. But the first episode that we're going to do um, with a little hiatus possibly is going to be the elusive Gordon Peters. He is on his way up right now. I think he's in Columbia. He's staying the night there with his parents. It might be too much too much information. He went up there with his daughter dropping his daughter off in Columbia, and then he's going to continue that trek on tomorrow morning to Sparta, Tennessee, which is a little bit west of uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, where Caleb and I went and did a podcast with Slayton Johnson up there. But he's going to Sparta. He's doing some business up there with Taco Boats, who he works for. Taco Marine, not Taco Boats, Taco Marine. And... He's going to go up there and do some whitewater rafting, some kayaking, some fishing, a bunch of great stuff. He's going to come back and bring a whole bunch of stories to sit down and talk to me about on the next podcast with a guest. So that's going to be Gordon Peters, uh, probably about a week away from now. And we're going to sit down and have just a fantastic time. If you haven't listened to the previous episode, let me look it up here. I'm going to post it in the show notes and I'm going to put a link to it. Um, Give me just one second here. Let me pull up my iTunes podcast app and let me pull up Craft Conversations. Um, Here we go. And if I go down to May 18th was the date that we released that episode. That was actually episode eight, Gordon Peters, called the Back to School episode, the Back to School special episode. Uh, Very fantastic episode. Gordon Peters is just a, a fantastic guy. He has knowledge that you would not even begin to fathom that he had or that he has and a big floor fauna expert he knows anything about everything if you got a subject gordon peters will know something about that subject so he was on episode eight i'll post that in the show notes and like i said we've done 20 plus episodes he was way back he's old school he's going to be back on the show it's going to be fantastic with all that said, this is a, a podcast about influential, interesting, and fun people, but it's also about craft beer. I am going to open a beer real quick. This is a Pettishaw. It's a sour wheat ale from Holy City Brewing. I love those guys. I drink a lot of their beer. Let me go to my untapped and see what we got. I don't think there was any info on here. There's It's 4.3% ABV. There's no IBUs listed has an average rating of 3.69, which I think is very super low. I'm going to crack this beer for you right now. There it goes. And we're going to pour this into my Ville to Ville Craft Brew Relay glass. Let's see if we can get some audio of the pour here. Maybe a little bit. Not much going on. 
So we're going to get that there. I'm going to read the back of this glass, and I'm or the can. I'm actually going to put my glasses on. That's why I said glass, because I was thinking about glasses. So it says, uh, we love to remember our own humble beginnings. Hell, our humble beginnings are probably still upon us. Before our brewery in North Charleston, we all huddled around a homemade brew station downtown in the pedicab rickshaw shed as our first recipes came to life. This crisp, sour wheat ale is for all those tricycle riders that pedaled miles upon miles to keep the lights on for us. So, hence the name, Pedishaw. I wish I could give you a little uh, photo shot of it, but that's coming back very soon. Uh, to sour wheat ale and you know what we were supposed to get uh, paradise and wash out wheat out to the event the the uh, rivercraft event jt out there at holy city said that he wasn't able to get paradise that they were kind of out of stock of those uh, two cases that we were supposed to get so they supplied the pettishaw the sour wheat ale and i tell you what i'm super happy that that happened because although i love paradise it's a very great session ale this Pettishaw was perfect for a blistering, hot, humid summer day for that event. So I'm very happy that that uh, little mishap happened. Pettishaw, a sour wheat ale from Holy City Brewing Company. If you haven't had it, get out there and get it. It's one of their flagship beers, one of the first beers they produced. And it is fantastic. And I'm going to take a sip right now. Share a sip with you. If any of you are George Carlin fans, George Carlin used to share a swallow with people. And uh, I like that guy. George Carlin's one of my heroes. Speaking of one of my heroes, Bruce Lee is one of my heroes. I, po I posted a video today on Facebook. Um, one of his famous uh, quotes is, be water, my friend. You know, water can crash or it can flow. And I kind of feel like that's the way this podcast could, could have gone. It could have crashed or it could still flow. And a lot of people thought that uh, when Caleb and I separated that it was going to crash. But I'm going to keep it flowing. And whatever direction it takes, it's going to take. It's going to flow in that direction. We're going to carve that path out, that river. We're going to carve that rock out and make that path as smooth as possible. And we're going to take it to the next level because that's where it needs to go. And I cannot, man, I cannot wait for Gordon Peters to get back in here because we've got a lot to talk about. Not only are we going to talk about the stuff that he's doing up in Sparta, Tennessee, but we're going to talk about a few things that we've done since the last podcast that we've had. He's just an amazing guy. Amazing guy. Um, what else can I talk about tonight? I wasn't even going to do a show tonight, to be honest. I worked at Double today. I was working at Coastal Coffee Roasters, and then I worked at Oak Road Brewing Company. It was a fairly busy day, fairly busy night. Um, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night because I don't know if it was just the stress of this whole podcast thing or um, the stress of, I keep saying I'm a lot, and I'm kind of a big I kind of I kind of don't like that I was you know I was a big kind of public speaker for a while I was in the Air Force I was an Air Force recruiter I did a lot of public speaking and I hated when people said um and like and blah 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 and all this kind of stuff I seem like I'm kind of saying that but I think it's because I miss my partner Caleb we kind of bounced off of each other I didn't have to say um all the time because I had uh, a sounding board. I have somebody sitting there to kind of uh, fill in the the spaces a little bit, and I, th I feel like I'm filling in the spaces myself. What was I getting to? Oh, so I had a big day today. I worked at Costa Coffee. I worked at Oak Road. I wasn't feeling too well because I didn't sleep that well last night. I think it was something I ate. My stomach was really just gurgling all night. I mean, literally, I was laying in bed. No matter what direction I laid, whether it's my left side, my right side, my back side. Uh, my stomach, my my stomach was just gurgling. It was just making all kind of weird noises. It felt like I was just in a cave, and just all this echo uh, chamber noise was just coming out of my stomach. And I think it caused me to have nightmares because 
I swear I was up every single hour last night because of a nightmare. Only one I remember. I don't know why. There was one I vaguely remember where I was paralyzed. I could not move. I don't remember what was going on, but I remember being completely paralyzed. My arms, my legs, my body. I could not turn from left to right. I had. I was sitting laying directly on my back. I could not turn one way or the other. I could not lift my arms. I could not lift my legs. I couldn't speak. Nothing. And then all of a sudden, I woke up and I was released and I was able to to move about. But the one that I do remember was... I was in a, I was in a room. Well, I didn't know that until I woke up in the room, but I was... I was laying there, I was, uh, I think I was asleep, and all of a sudden I heard this screeching of uh, tires, like, from a car, like either the car was braking or it was uh, speeding along or something, but I heard screeching of tires, and this car kind of going erratic and out of control. So I sat up in this bed, I didn't quite realize where I was at this point, quite yet, so I, I sat up. And when I sat up, the uh, the window was right there. I started looking out the window, and I see this this car just kind of going erratically, um, spinning, uh, not spinning out of control, but just kind of going out of control, kind of weaving back and forth, flying just at very high speeds. It was kind of on the road. It was on the wrong side of the road, and it was kind of going up and on, up and off of the uh, the curb. And then it went up onto the curb completely and started taking out mailboxes. So boom, takes out one mailbox, boom, takes out a second mailbox, gets to the end of the street. And at this point, I'm looking at the car and the car is either, I'm colorblind, so it's kind of hard for me to see these things sometimes, but the car was either black, blue, uh, like a dark blue, or maybe it was like a a brown or a, uh, a burgundy or something. I don't know. Who knows? All I know, it was a dark car. It's taken out a couple uh, um, mailboxes at this point. It gets to the end of the street. And by the way, the street, I recognize, I live out in Somerville, South Carolina now. I've been out here since 1986. I, I, I went away for a few years, or not a few years, a few a couple decades, 21 years, when I went into the Air Force. And I, I just came back about three or four years ago. But anyway... I used to live in Pepper Hill down in North Charleston off of Ashley Phosphate Road. And I, vague, uh, not vaguely, I definitely recognize this road as the road, North Haven Drive, that I grew up on in Pepper Hill. So, so anyway, this car goes down, this dark uh, dark car. It's taken out a couple of mailboxes. It gets to the end of North Haven Drive that I recognize. It does a big loop to the right and kind of loops around and does a, a 180 and starts coming back down the road. All of a sudden, this car is now not, it's not the same car. It's a different color car. It's like a tan or a beige. It's a light colored car. It comes pulling up. It stops like right underneath this tower that I'm actually sitting on. I'm way off the road. I'm way up, like not even two stories, maybe three, four stories up in the air. This car comes up. The whole front end is crushed. Uh, Nobody gets out. All of a sudden, I realize I'm looking out this window that is like, it's not a regular window in a house. This is a reinforced, like double, triple um, thick glass, like a reinforced window that, you know, I can't break. I can't get out of. There's no way I'm, there's no uh, raising the window up and jumping out of this building. I'm, I'm stuck behind this window. All of a sudden, I hear footsteps like boots like uh combat boots as somebody were wearing the military coming up like steel type stairs that's the sound that i'm hearing i turn around away from this window it's the first time i've looked at the room that i'm in i turn around and this room is probably five five feet by five feet it's a very tiny room very sterile it's like all stainless steel um no colors whatsoever nothing on the walls i'm on this little cot this little twin bed type cot I jump off of the bed, I scurry over to the door, and I look, there's like a crack in the door. Maybe it's a maybe it's a viewfinder or something that I can kind of see outside of this door. And I look down, and I see a guy coming up this, 
long stairwell. Um, like I said, he's got some kind of rubber boots, maybe combat boots, something on. He's got this rubber apron on. He's got this face mask on. He's halfway up these, this stairwell. And all of a sudden, I wake up. So that's the type of night that I had all night. Oh, man. Just nightmare after nightmare after nightmare. And I got to think that it's something I ate. I went to Applebee's after... Um, I went to Homegrown Brew House to watch the soccer game yesterday. The England and Croatia soccer game. And when I left there, you know, I had a couple beers. Uh, they have phenomenal beers there. When I left there, I decided to go to Applebee's. And I said, oh, I'm going to get uh, some of the beef, um, uh, the barbecue tacos that they got. And I got a couple French fries and some uh, buffalo sauce. And I think something was wrong with the tacos, man. I don't know. It just really messed my stomach up. So the entire night, I was having nightmares. And I was literally up every single hour for the entire night. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. I know you guys are probably saying, like, what in the world is going on with this guy? He's uh, taking this podcast in a weird direction. Uh, why are we talking about nightmares? But... What I want to do is I want to talk about craft beer. I want to have a conversation with some guests whenever I have guests here in the podcast. When I don't have any guests, I'm going to sit here and just talk about weird shit. I'm going to talk about whatever whatever happened with my day, whatever happened with, uh, with my kids, whatever happened with my family. I'm going to share just all the intimate details of my life. And that was what happened to me last night. So... To get back to what I was saying, I've had a rough day because I did not sleep very well last night and working back-to-back job almost uh, 11 hours worth of a day was pretty taxing, pretty taxing. I'm sitting here with Leia, by the way. Leia is now allowed into the studio. Um, We didn't allow her in the studio, Caleb and I. That was kind of a rule, but... Now that I'm doing this thing solo and Leia is my dog, Leia is now long, uh, now allowed in the podcast. And she's sitting right here looking at me. She loves being in here. <laughs> she <laughs> she is a staple of the podcast now. So once I get the video back, you'll probably see more of Leia. I know people have asked to see more of Leia. She's a sweet girl. She is an American Staffordshire Terrier, or some people would call her Pitbull. I don't care what she is. She's a sweet dog. And I love her, and she's going to get more screen time on this podcast. That's all I got to say. Another thing I want to talk about that has come up is there's a good possibility that I could be leaving the low country. You know, this this podcast doesn't have to be just about the low country and all these different breweries around here, craft conversations. Uh, we've made a lot of good contacts around here, and it's a, a fantastic place. We've got 26, 27 plus breweries at the moment, and it's fantastic for a podcast like this. I got a lot of people that I can talk to, but there's a good possibility I might be taking this thing out west. Uh, both my kids are out there. I have a my older son, Brian Dales Jr., who you guys have seen me post about a little bit on social media. He's out in Flagstaff, Arizona. He and his wife, uh, Megan. And my younger son is out in Reno, Nevada. And, you know, that's why I retired from the Air Force out in uh, Las Vegas. So that's why both of them are out there in that area. And I stayed in Vegas for a little bit after I retired. And then I decided to come back here to South Carolina to be with uh, my parents and to be with my brothers and to be with uh, some aunts and uncles. My grandmother was still alive at the time. She died at 94 years old. So I had various reasons why I came back here, but I feel like the West Coast is calling me back now to to kind of go back and be with both of my sons. And there's plenty of breweries out there. There's plenty of businesses out there. There's plenty of influential, interesting, and exciting people, fun people to talk to out there. So there's a good possibility that after I kind of scour the land here for the next few months in the low country, that I could head out west to possibly Arizona, to possibly Nevada. I've thought about California. 
I've thought about Oregon. I've thought about Washington State. And this podcast can be viable in any of those places. And I would hope that you guys would follow me up there no matter where I am, no matter the locale. If I'm not here in the low country, what does that matter? Joe Rogan's not in the low country, and a lot of people listen to him out here. Howard Stern is not in the low country. He's up in New York, and millions of people listen to him up there. So I feel like I can go anywhere and be viable, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that that's a possibility as well. But before I do that, I would like to sit here and talk to people like Gordon Peters and people like Holy City Brewing Company and people like the head brewer at Polly's Island Brewing uh, down in North Charleston and the people like the great people over at Craft Conundrum, Richard and Karen, and talk to them about Craft Conundrum business and talk to, talk to Karen about the Keto Dojo that I've mentioned here at the beginning of this podcast. So there's lots of stuff to talk about, lots of stuff to do here. Lots of stuff to tie up before I possibly move out west. Man, I feel like I've talked about a lot of stuff already. And I feel like there's so much more to talk about, to be honest. We are 30-something minutes in. I think I'm going to tie this up. It is now 12.49 at night. I started this podcast way too late, but I got off late and was contemplating whether I was even going to do a show, but I wanted to make sure because I told you guys on Tuesday that I was going to try and stick to the Tuesday, Friday episodes at the time being while I was in this transition. And I feel like I owe it to you guys. So this is what you got. I hope it was entertaining. I hope it was fun. I hope you got some information out of it. This is a wonderful beer beer from Holy City Brewing Company, this Pettishaw Sour Wheat Ale. You guys need to get out and enjoy that. You can get it in cans. Uh, Sometimes they have it on draft here at the brew house as well, or the brewery down in North Charleston. Um, Get you some, and I will talk to you soon.